Hello all. Today I will tell you about Multan, city in the Punjab province of Pakistan and capital of Multan district. So it is located in the southern part of the province and is steeped in history. It has a population of over 3.8 million according to 1998 census making it the sixth largest city in Pakistan. It is built just east of the Chenab river more or less in the geographic center of the country and about 966 km from Karachi. Multan is known as the city of peers and shrines and is a prosperous city of bazaars, mosques, shrines and superbly designed tombs. The Multan International Airport connects to flights to major cities in Pakistan and to cities in the Persian Gulf. The city's industries include metalworking, flour, sugar and oil milling and the manufacture of textiles, fertilizer, soap and glass. Multan is also known for its handicrafts, especially pottery and animal work. One of the subcontinent's oldest cities, Multan derives its name from an idol in the temple of the sun god, a shrine of the pre-Muslim period. The city was conquered by Alexander the Great, visited AD 641 by the Chinese Buddhist scholar Suan Sang taken 8th century by the Arabs and captured by the Muslim Turkish conqueror Muhammad of Ghazna in 1005 and by Timur in 1398. In the 16th and 17th century, Multan enjoyed peace under the early Mughal emperors. In 1818, the city was seized by Ranjit Singh, leader of the Sikhs, the British held it from 1848 until Pakistan achieved independence in 1947. Landmarks include an old fort containing the 14th century tombs of the two Muslim saints. During 200 BC, the earliest history of Multan fades away in the mists of mystery and mythology. Most of the historians, however, agree that Multan, beyond any doubt, is the same Maiasthan, which was conquered by Alexander, who faced here tremendous resistance. He was practically wounded while fighting to capture the citadel. For the first time, his sacred shield, which he had taken from the temple of Iloyan, Athna, and which he used always to be carried before him in all his battles, rolled in dust while he fell unconscious on the ground, with blood gushing out from his bounds, but that was the scene which inspired the Macedonians, and seeing their king in that strait by the launched a lightning attack and captured the citadel without any further harm to Alexander. Alexander, however, never recovered fully well after this battle and died on his way back at Babylon during 400 to 600 AD. History is silent for more than six centuries, that is until 454 AD, when white hands, the barbarous nomads, stormed Multan under the banner of their leader Torman. After fierce fight they conquered but did not stay for long and Hindu rule continued once again for about 200 years. During 600 to 700 AD. Subsequent history of Muldan is well established and more than sufficient light has been thrown on the cross section by the world famous travelers, writers and historians who visited Multan, including the Chinese historian. Yuan Sang in 641 AD. The Chinese traveler found the circuit of the city about 30 li, which is equal to 5 miles. He described the soil rich and fertile, 
and mentioned about eight Deva temples. He also mentioned that people do not believe in Buddha rule. The city is thickly populated. The grand temple dedicated to the sun is very magnificent and profusely decorated. The image of the sun deva, also known as Mitra, is cast in yellow gold and ornamented with the rare gems. Its divine insight mysteriously manifested and its spiritual powers made plain to all and so on. Multan was first visited by the Muslims arms during the reign of the Khalifa Abu Bakr in 44 Hijri 664 AD and Muhalib the Arab general afterwards an eminent commander in Persia and Arabia penetrated to the ancient capital of the Mahdi he returned with many prisoners of war. The expedition, however, seems to have been directed towards exploration of the country as no attempt was apparently made to retain the conquest. During 700 to 800 AD, Muhammad bin Qasim, the great Muslim general, invaded this subcontinent in 712 AD and conquered Sindh and Multan. The city was conquered after fierce and long battle, which lasted for seven days. Many distinguished officers of the Muslim army sacrificed their lives in the battle, but the Hindu army was defeated. The author of Jawahar al-Bahur, the famous Arabic history, writes in his book, that Multan at that time was known as the house of gold. There was a great mandir which was also called as the sun mandir. It was so big that 6,000 resident worshippers were housed therein. Thousands of people from every corner of the country used to visit this place to perform their hajj pilgrimage. They used to circle round it and get their beards and heads shaved off as a mark of respect. During 800 to 980, in the periods of Caliph Mansur and Mustasim Bilya, Multan was attacked by Arabs several times. During 900 to 1080, Ibn Khurdaba described in his book, the Book of Roads and Kingdoms Multan being two months journey from Zorani, the capital of Sijistan, by the name of Fajj, because Muhammad, son of Qasim, lieutenant of at hajjaj found vast quantities of gold in the city, which was forwarded to the Caliph's treasury, so it was called by the Arabs the House of Gold. Al-Masudi of Baghdad who visited the valley of the Indus in 303 AH 1915 AD mentioned about Multan in his book The Meadows of Gold that Muslim in Multan are in large quantity. Multan is 75 Sindhian farsangs from Mansura. It is one of the strongest frontier places of the Muslims and in its neighborhood there are a hundred and twenty thousand towns and villages. Al Masudi also mentioned about the idol and explained as to how people living in the distant parts of the country travel to Multan to perform pilgrimage and in fulfillment of their vows and religious obligations. They make offerings of money, precious stones, perfumes of every kind, and allow wood before it. Before Takhari or Istakhar, a Persepolis who wrote about the middle of the 10th century, 340 AH 19, 951 AD, and Ibn Hokal of Baghdad, who based his work on that of Istakhari give glowing accounts of Multan which they described as a large, fortified and impregnable city about half the size of Mansura, the ancient Muslim capital of Sindh, 
They also mentioned about the idol of Multan as being held in great venerations by Hindus who flocked to it from all parts of India. Sultan Sabak Tagin, the Afghan king, conquered Multan but after four years, that is in 980 AD, it was conquered by Sardar of the Karamati tribe who ruled it for some time. During 1000 to 1100 AD, Mahmud Ghaznavi attacked Multan for the first time, conquered it and demolished many Hindu temples. He demolished the famous Sun Mandir also. Mahmud Ghaznavi attacked Multan for a second time during 1010 AD and conquered it but did not stay for long. During 1100 to 1200 AD, Sultan Shahabuddin who is also known as Muhammad Gaburi finally defeated Prithvi Raj and conquered India. After consolidating his position in Delhi, the capital of India, led an army attack against Multan and conquered it. As such, Multan, which had remained almost independent under the Arab rulers, became a dependency of the house of the Ghaznavi. Sultan Muhammad Ghori appointed I. Kamrani as his governor of Multan and Uch. During 1200 to 1300 AD, in 1218 AD, Chinggis Khan invaded western Turkestan and for the next three centuries, history of Multan is practically the history of incursions from western and central Asia to which the invasion of Chinggis gave rise. During this period, Multan was nominally subject to the Delhi Empire. There were, however, two periods when Multan was practically a separate kingdom independent of Delhi. At times, the province was held by powerful governors who, though unable to secure independence, were powerful factors in the dynastic changes of the time. The administration of Multan suffered due to preoccupation of Delhi Empire in repelling the repeated raids of Mughals from Khorasan and Central Asia. In 1284 AD, the Mughals under Tamur Khan defeated and killed Prince Muhammad, known as the Martyr Prince, who then ruled Multan. In 1305 AD, an invasion under Abba Khan was repelled by the redoubtable warrior Ghazi Beg Tughlaq, who is said to have 29 times defeated the invading hordes. In 1327 AD, a force under Turmasharin Khan overran the dist and retreated on payment of bribe. In 1300 to 1400 AD, after the establishment of the Delhi Sultanate, Multan became its western frontier. In the beginning, it was governed by Nasiruddin Kabacha, then captured by Jalaluddin Manakabarni, and finally annexed by Shamsaluddin Al Tamash. When Balban strengthened his frontier guard, he posted his eldest son Sultan Muhammad Khan, I Shahid here, and made him responsible for the defense. It was under his patronage that Amir Khusro and Hassan Dehalwi lived in Multan and composed their poems Multan. However, continuously suffered from Mongol invasions in order to meet these Mongol pressures, Ghazuddin Tughluq was appointed as a warden of the frontier marches. From Multan, he rose to be as a Sultan of Delhi. Multan remained under the Tolaks until it was conquered by Amir Tamur in 1397 AD. During this long period, the prosperity of Multan grew unabated. It was during this period that the city was adorned by important monuments that established a particular school of Multani architecture. The tombs of Bahal bin Zakaria, Sharun al Din Ruknayalan, and Shams Sabzwari have given to Multan a unique place in the Indo-Muslim architecture. The presence of these tombs of the saints mentioned above have also added a religious tone to the city.
in 1397 AD came to the invasion of Tamur, whose troops occupied Uch and Multan. Sir Toyamba raided the whole conquerors of Rawi and passed across base to Pakpatan and Delhi. During 1400 to 1500 AD, in India, in reality, Khizar Khan Sayyid governed the kingdom in the name of Tamur, but without any sovereign title or royal honors. During the troubled reign of his grandson, Sayyid Muhammad, an insurrection broke out in Multan among the Afghans called Langas. Finally, one of the Langa chiefs proclaimed himself as the king of Multan under the title of Sultan, Kutbuddin Langa. During the eight years that Multan was held by Langa dynasty, it became the principal caravan route between India and Kandahar. Commerce and agriculture flourished. All the lands along the banks of the Chenab and the Ghagra, as well as some of the Indus, were cultivated and, spro- and prosperity flourished once again. During 1500 to 1680, in 1526 A.D., Shah Hussain Arghun, at that time the ruler of Sindh, seized Multan on behalf of Babur, the Mughal emperor. He bestowed it on his son Mirza Askri. The Mirza, assisted by Langar Khan, one of the powerful Amirs of Sultan Mahmud Langa, had possession of Multan during the rest of the Babur's reign. After the death of Babur, Humayun find Humayo found himself compared to surrender Multan. In fact, the whole of the Punjab to his eldest brother Kamran Mirza. The prince established his court in Lahore and deputed one of his Amirs to take care of Multan. During the confusion that followed the flight of Humayo to Persia, the kingdom of the kingdom of Multan was captured by Blochis under their chieftain Fateh Khan, who surrendered it to Habat Khan, one of the commanders of Sher Shah Suri. Pleased with his services, Sher Shah Suri bestowed the kingdom of Multan on Habat Khan. During 1600 to 1780, when Humayun recaptured the Indian throne in 1555 AD, Multan was amalgamated in the Mughal Empire. Abul Fazal mentions in Ansi Akbri that Multan was one of the largest provinces of the empire, extended to the frontiers of Persia, including within its limits the modern countries of Lochistan, Sindh, Shikarpur, and Tata, besides a portion of Dwabas now attached to Lahore, a royal mint for silver and copper coins was established at Multan along with the mints at Delhi, Agra and a few other places. Under the Mughal emperors, Multan enjoyed a long period of peace and was known as Darul Aman, city of peace, for more than 200 years that is from 1548 to 1748, there was no warfare in this part of the Punjab. As a, result, as a result of these peaceful conditions, cultivation increased, particularly in the riverine areas, and commerce flourished. Multan thus became an emporium for trade. The city became the headquarter of a province which covered the whole of the southwestern Punjab and at times include Sindh also. During 1700 to 1800 AD, at the decline of the Mughal Empire, Multan had at first escaped devastation, which was experienced by other parts of the subcontinent. The main reason was a change in the route of the invaders from Afghanistan to India as it lay through Lahore. So the armies of Nadir Shah and Ahmad Shah Abdali left Multan Unscathed, after having been a part of the Delhi Empire, Multan in 1752 became a province. Owing allegiance to the Afghan kings of Kabul, 
During this period, the country was ruled by governors of Pathan extraction and under the rule of the Sadozais of Kabul. The Sadozais governed Multan for more than 66 years, but general conditions remained turbulent. After consolidating their positions at Lahore, the Sikhs marched to the southwest for over 250 miles. They crossed the Indus and penetrating into the Deras. Under their commanders, Sardar Hari Singh Bhangi and his sons, Chanda Singh and Ganda Singh, along with Hira Singh, the Sikhs destroyed everything, plundered many villages, and killed the people mercilessly, set the houses of the Muslims on fire, and demolished many mosques. Ultimately, under the command of Chanda Singh and Ganda Singh, they appeared before Multan on March 9, 1764 AD, looted its suburbs, but after collecting millions of rupees, they returned. During 1800 to 1900 AD, by the beginning of the 1818, Ranjit Singh succeeded to raise a big army consisting of 25,000 soldiers, equipped with necessary provisions which he placed under Diwan Misra Chand, his most trusted general. The overall charge of the campaign was entrusted to his soldiers Sen Khark Singh and the contingent set out for Multan with great pomp and show. The famous Zamzama gun was also transported to Multan. Nawab Muzaffar Khan Saduzai, who was a governor of Multan for the past 39 years, fought courageously but failed to save Multan from the clutches of sex. The death of Muzaffar Khan was in fact the death of the Muslim rule in Multan. After capturing the fort, the six soldiers were let loose to arson in debauchery and Latif recorded as under. The city and fort were now given up to be plundered by the Sikh troops. Great were the ravages committed by the Sikhs on the occasion. About 400 to 500 houses in the fort were razed to the ground and their owners deprived of all they had. The precious stones, jewelry, shawls and the valuables belonging to the Nawabs were confiscated to the state and kept carefully packed by Divan Ramdial for inspection of the Maharaja. In the town, many houses were set on fire and nothing was left with the inhabitants that was worth having. Hundreds were killed in city sack and indeed there was hardly a soul who escaped both loss and violence. The Sikh rule continued in the Punjab and the Multan unchecked, but thinking themselves very powerful, the Sikhs crossed the Sutlej and entered into the British territory. They looted some of the villages also. This happened on December 8, 1845 AD. The outcome of this adventure was a fierce battle and a disastrous and ignominious defeat of the Sikh army. Thereafter, a treaty was signed between the British and the Sikhs. Under the new treaty, a council of regency was established at Lahore, which empowered the British to intervene into many administrative matters. Keeping in view the provisions of the treaty, the British resident introduced several mayors in order to regulate the administration throughout the Sikh territories. These measures were to be implemented by Divan Mulraj, also, who was the Sikh governor of Multan. The changes were, however, detrimental to the overall interests of the Divan as they affected his tight control over the traders and businessmen. The other decision of the resident, which brought a blow to Divan Mulraj, was the introduction of appeals against the decisions of the district officers. Such appeals were to be heard by the Lahore Darbar. 
these measures infuriated the divan as he considered it as an infringement of his rights so keeping in view the insulting attitude of the british divan moltaj first resigned then changed his mind and agreed to continue for some time later his resignation was accepted on march 24 1848 and sardar khan singh was appointed as the new diwan of multan while two british officers mr p a vance agnew and lieutenant w a anderson were appointed to take care of the administration when these officers reached multan they were received by diwan moltaraj but his advisers forced him to change his mind in the meanwhile commotion and agitation spread into the city as such the helpless divan became a tool in the hands of the sikh army which rebelled and the two british officers were murdered the rebelling soldiers gathered around moltaraj and declared him as their leader this open rebellion infuriated the british government at lahore and they decided that multan should be captured and amalgamated into the british territory so the british government collected forces right from bannu to bombay on top priority basis in order to capture multan and by the end of the year multan was surrounded from all sides on december 21 1848 the bombay division commanded by the brigadier dandas also reached multan on december 27 once one british column launched an attack on the suburbs and the residence of moldraj the arm khas was bombarded while three other columns were ordered to make diversion to distract the army the irregular forces commenced the diversion at noon and by 4 pm the whole line of the suburbs including the tomb of savan mal the blue mosque of shams sabzwari and the cantonments of the arm khas were in possession of the british the bombay native rifles actually entered one of the city gates meanwhile a shell from a mortar blew up the magazine located within the fort containing 5000 mounds of powder The explosions destroyed the great mosque and the lofty dome of Bahauddin Zakaria tomb. On January 2, 1849, breaches in the Khuni Burj and the Delhi Gate were reported, and storming parties advanced and crossed to the intervening ditch. But the city wall was found intact with a height of 30 feet, totally impregnable. The most bloody struggle ensued and the English became masters of the town again to quote Latif terrible had been the carnage during the siege and frightful the effect of the british ordinance the battered town of multan presented the appearance of a vessel wrecked and broken by a tremendous storm which had driven it to an an inhospitable shore the streets were strewn with slain six whose long locks mat with gore and beards blown about by the wind gave the dead a demonical appearance not a house or wall had escaped the effects of the english shells all had been scorched and blackened by the bombardment muraj retired to the citadel with more than 3000 picked men the rest all dispersed and fled in vain did the divan make an endeavor to rally them they were dispirited and nothing was left for the garrisons but to sally or surrender moltaraj was now reduced to the last extremity a constant storm of shell had reduced the interior of the fortress to wreck all the floor having been blown up in the explosion of the grand mosque every soldier of the garrison was obliged to grind the wheat for his own food muldar chief advisers urgently pressed him to surrender and he promised either to do this or take poison 
he was finally arrested by the british and that was the end of the sikh rule or multan as well as the end of loot and plunder which was the main characteristic of the sikh rule as stated above the residents of multan suffered extensively during the battle it was another addition to the history of the power game and bloodshed witnessed by the states of multan but life returned to normal with the passage of time during 1900 to 2006 ad multan however lost lost its very important position as soon as the british stronghold over the subcontinent grew stronger and stronger all the peace prevailed in the region but no real progress was made when independence was achieved in 1947 multan was a forgotten region there was no industry no higher and professional education and institutions no high standard hospitals so much so that there was not even a single recreation park in the whole of the city it looked more like a town though its population was nearly 1 lakh the site of the old fort was in ruins thorny bushes and ditches were in plenty whispering the awful tale of its ruination majority of the roads were unmetalled and the sewerage system too defective to explain the history of the district since independence is mainly connected with the expansion of facilities except a few minor changes such as one of its districts that is dg khan has been declared as the divisional headquarter and some of its tehsils such as bihari as the new district etc so this is the history of multan punjab pakistan kindly like subscribe and share my channel thank you